Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Hercules Seven Piece Impact Rated Titanium Cobalt Hex Shank Drill Bit Set. The other Hercules Drill Bit Sets actually aren't rated as being Impact Rated, so I thought these were kind of interesting because only the Seven Piece Set actually has the Impact Rated. It seems that the other Hercules Drill Bit Sets don't specifically mention that they're Impact Rated, and there's some interesting build features of these. After which, I'll uh, attempt to not screw up and drill a hole through a piece of 304 stainless. Mainly because they are impact rated and they specifically say both metal and angle iron. And lots of times angle iron will end up with at least a quarter inch cross section, if not much thicker. Although it tends to be mild steel, I think 304 is kind of a nice compromise. A reasonably drillable steel that isn't something that's hardened that you would never expect a, a non-cobalt or even carbide drill bit to get through. If we take a look at these drill bits, what I thought was interesting is how they decided to build these. There's two, two distinctions about these. One, that they have a progressive flute. And on this largest one, we can see how thin the flute is right at the top, where it's much thicker at the bottom. That just gives it much more clearance in the flute. So when you're drilling soft materials, such as wooden plastics, it really will move fast. This is the same thing that the DeWalt pilot points use, but they also have a pilot point where these instead use what is known as a split tip where they do an extra little grind so you have two little cutting edges right there at the tip to help prevent it from walking criticisms of this progressive flute design is one many times it's a lot more aggressive than people want and because it's so thin uh, a lot of times especially in thinner cross sections of material when it breaks through it really doesn't want to clear out the edge and it just wants to screw itself in so that's one criticism and of course the second one is is since there is less metal down at the tip of the drill uh, there's going to be more twisting and a greater likelihood of it breaking which is what makes it curious that these are impact rated the other thing that we can see here is if we get these organized we can see that the four larger sizes are indeed ground from the same piece of stock they grind the drill bit and then they grind the hex shank on it and you can see the grind marks Pretty obviously if I get them in the right light. And then these three smaller ones you can see have don't have grind marks. They're distinctly different. And that's because on these smaller ones what they've done is they manufactured the drill bit and the shank separately. And then they are press fit. So I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, cost savings measure. And I wonder if these little ones are going to have any kind of issues. With either centering because now you have to make this hex and drill the hole really well centered with the hex. And then put the drill bit in there. Versus it have being manufactured in a single process. And I suspect how they get the impact rating is that they're either using just a slightly different grade of high speed steel. Or have adjusted the heat treatment so it won't be quite as brittle. Uh, what I've had a hard time in, uh, finding online is all, uh, several manufacturers make impact rated drill bits. But not a lot of people really evaluated whether they have a uh, difference in Rockwell hardness. Or how much faster or slower they wear. And that could only be done under pretty controlled circumstances. Oh, and one final reason why I even picked these up is, uh, one, they were impact rated. But two, when I was looking on the back of the package, it seemed real curious. And I think the same company that makes these bits, uh, Harbor Freight sourcing these from a Milwaukee supplier. And what really kind of got me there was this professionally made in China for Hercules tools. That font... The way that it's laid out, the location on the package, and how it's worded is exactly the same as Milwaukee's, where it says, professionally made in China for Milwaukee tools. It just was, like, really odd. It looks exactly the same. Actually, the other odd thing was the graphic on the back looks like it was hand-drawn. I have not seen something like this in years. But you can just see this the odd inconsistency. It was like the first time somebody had been using a vector program, vector graphics program, like Adobe Illustrator. It's what newspapers use to make their charts. It's known as a vector graphics program. This is the type of graphics they make. And it's just like really oddly inconsistent and not very precise for being a computer-generated graphic. I just thought that was kind of amusing. It was like a little throwback. It was like, what on earth? Is that a hand-drawn kind of deal? Very odd. Anyway, let's get to drilling here. All right, here we are. We're going to do a quarter inch hole. I did do a little divot, but you know, just as like somebody might just be doing a normal hole through steel with a quarter inch, uh, many times they're not going to pilot drill the whole thing. And usually that's done with larger bits, but certainly helps with any size bit. And uh, we are using a DeWalt DCF887. 
this will be a bit loud, and we'll see how it gets to five eighths of an inch of uh, 304 stainless raw stock. And I'll periodically pause to add some more fluid to this. You do want to wear safety glasses, especially with impact driver drilling, as well as use plenty of oil periodically, lift the bed out, and give it some new oil. give it a little oil it seems to be cutting okay so far especially with the split tip unfortunately I'm using a little bit of three-in-one oil which isn't optimal but it's still uh, more than reasonable for a simple little drilling operation surprisingly enough it's not even impacting we're not even getting enough resistance to cause the tool to impact Technically, a quarter inch and, and 304 stainless, this impact driver spins at 3,250 RPM, which is pretty fast, a little too fast even. It's taking a little, a second or two to get through here. Definitely getting hot with all that speed. I'm probably using a little bit too much oil. Now it's starting to impact as we get a little deeper and a little bit more resistance. Suspect the tip's getting a little duller because it's, they're not advertised as having any kind of cobalt in there. This bit's definitely taking an abuse just getting through a... I guess it's a reasonable cross-section of of stainless steel when it's five-eighths of an inch thick, so 15 millimeters. Really having a tough time here. That was actually all she wrote for this bit. It's now so dull that it it's going to take a lot of time to get just to the last little bit of that. Let's go back to the table. Let me get this adjusted. And there's actually a point to all this is the fact that when you're selling drill bits that are rated as impact rated, and then specifically say, you know, steel, angle iron, and other metals, is that you're setting people up for failure. High speed steel cannot run at those kind of impact driver speeds, which tend to be around 3000 RPM. In the steels, they just overheat and dull. There's something known as speeds and feeds when drilling metal, and it's a real big deal in the machine shop when you have milling machines. Why is this so zoomed in? There we go. You actually set the specific speed, so you take the cutting speed, say, of 304 stainless steel, which is somewhere around, I believe, 75. You'd run that through a formula, and it would give you a number around 1,000 RPM, and that's where you, what you would want to run a quarter-inch drill through this particular grade of steel. And so we were running at three times the speed, and that's the same issue anybody else is going to run into is, sure, it'll drill a couple pieces of angle iron before the drill bit just completely burns up. You shouldn't advertise drill bits as being, even though they may not physically shatter under impact loads, they're not going to last properly because in a vast majority of the situations, except for these very smallest ones, you're going to be running them, you're going to be overspeeding them so bad that you're just going to burn them up. And I'll show you what happened to this one. Now I need some more zoom again. We can see that that just got pretty burned up. You saw the video, I wasn't perfect wasn't using the perfect cutting fluid but it wasn't just hitting it dry and i was pulling it out actually pretty often and it just burned it up and you can see how far we got through this piece of steel this piece of steel is really hot still really started generating a lot of friction at the end there we made it let's just take a look here the steel's hot the drill bits come off we made it Almost all the way through, maybe a half an inch of 304 stainless before the drill bit got so dull that it just physically wouldn't cut anymore. Also, we can see that the quality of the hole is just not very good. It's a bit oval because of the way the impact driver is hitting and because of the quarter inch hex shank. This doesn't keep it 
quite as well centered and is not as stiff as actually using a uh, drill chuck and it allowed the hole to just not be quite as round. And it's kind of hard to see, but the surface finish inside this hole is also just absolutely terrible. Let me zoom back out. Anyway, for the whatever it is, 12, 13 bucks on the shelf, these are just regular, really, drill bits. They may not shatter because of a different heat treatment, but they have no other special properties. They're not even cobalt for actually running at the high speeds impact drivers run at when they're not impacting into metals. They just is too fast and it overheats them and they just do not last. So it's a bit of a disappointment and really there's no reason you should spend the money on these when you can get any old set of uh, high speed steel titanium coated bits. Even though these seem like they're manufactured pretty well and have a pretty nice finish, the titanium coating actually looks pretty nice and thick. We can actually see even on the bit that it did burn up that the coating actually did attempt to uh, stay on there so I can give them credit for that. But really, don't you know believe this type of hype. They'll work great in wood. Pretty much any hex impact or hex drill bit will. And as far as being impact rated, uh, really what they're trying to do is to get you to drill a bunch of metals and burn up a bunch of bits. And uh, most people don't know, you know to use a grinder to resharpen them or to even have a grinder. So they go and buy more bits. So generally not recommended. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.